Hi, my name is Keith Cooper and uh, I'm going to have a quick look at some free Epson software. Uh, the Epson Media Installer goes with the Epson P700, P900, this is a P700 13 inch printer and it allows you to install media types and edit and change media types on the printer. Um, what do I mean by media types? Well, it's when you load a piece of paper into the printer here, and this is the paper I want to use with this, uh, you get to set the size and the paper type. You also set the paper type, or media type, in the driver when you're printing. And also when you get uh, ICC profiles that have been made, so I've made lots for this, um, the ICC profiles were made with a particular media setting. Now that media setting needs to be used when you use that profile. So a profile for a paper, an ICC profile, specifies the paper type, the printer obviously, and the media settings. Now it may have, and I include it sometimes in the profile name, may also have the print quality setting that the profile was made, although that's perhaps less important. The key ones is to make sure you get the right media type. Now I've got a, this is an art paper, um, quite a stiffish paper, but not very thick. It's uh, an old Hewlett Packard paper uh, that I have from testing years ago. Um, I have boxes of the stuff, uh, hence why I use it in tests and things like this. I don't normally use it very much. And I find that where I do want to use it, I use, I've created a profile, and this is the uh, a view of the profile using the Mac ColorSync utility. This, I'm doing this on a Mac, but it's, it's very similar on a PC. So there's the uh, profile, there's a view of the profile there, it just gives you an idea of its gamut. Um, but that's the profile, and I've got it with the rest of my profiles. It's sitting there. I can print normally. I don't have to use the media installer. I can print normally by printing using the profile, uh, the media setting for this, the profile I've made for the paper and print just normally. So I would specify the paper. Now, in this instance, I've used the USFA Ultra Smooth Fine Art setting for making the profile. There are several other matte uh, settings. Um, some of them may be better for some papers. It's one of those things you work out when you're doing profiling. But I've done stuff elsewhere about looking at media settings and profiling on printers. This is about making sure that this particular paper effectively appears here on the display and when I'm printing. So what I'm going to use, this is a free bit of software. You install it and it, it offers uh, the ability to download media. There's a huge great list of uh, paper suppliers, um, all but two or three I'd never even heard of. Now I've been doing testing for years and there are that many paper suppliers that I've never heard of. Um, who knows what's in there? However, I did check one paper supplier that I did know here in the UK and there was nothing listed. What I'm going to say is that's a work in progress. By all means, have a look at the media download section. See what you think. See what you find there might be something of use. But what I'm looking at is the media management section. Now, I'm not going to be running this software in real time because um, it regularly stops and tells you it's going to take a few minutes working something out, transferring data between the printer or whatever. I've opened up the media management setting here and it gives you a big long list of uh, media types that are currently set up. Now, you can use the media download section, you can increase these, the Epson make ones, so it's worth having a look at, see what there is. But what I would say is, don't load up media settings just because they're there, unless you like wading through long lists of stuff that are of no use to you. So this is something to be used with care. You can actually use it for removing media types that you don't actually use, up to a point. Epson don't let you, you remove, for example, I noticed at the top of the list here, it says Epson Premium Glossy. I can't remove that. Uh, well, that's reasonable because Epson Premium Glossy or in Epson Premium Luster uses the basis for a lot of my profiles. Now, most of the time, I really don't bother setting up custom media. Um, this is uh, one of Epson's printers. 
So I'm going to install it on them and leave the appearance of that paper as a mystery to somebody at a future date who wonders what this particular media is. But if it was my own uh, printer, I would install a few. And I have installed a few in the past on different printers. This software is available on much larger printers. And when I next get a large printer, I'm going to be looking at media choices, profiling, uh, detail in print, lots more things, but on a bigger printer than this, because a lot of these effects only really start to show the benefits when you're making very big prints. This is an A3 plus sheet, 13 inch by 19 inch. That's medium size by my, my reckoning. Uh, A4 small, this is medium. Bigger is what I much prefer, if possible. Anyway, I've opened this up. A list of papers here. Um, I can select them, I can look them, and I can't edit papers that are pre-installed, so I can't change the characteristics of the Epson ones, but I can duplicate them. And what happens is if I duplicate one, and I select, I'll just select a paper. So in this instance, I would select Ultra Smooth Fine Art, duplicate it, and I get a new paper type. Now I'm going to open the one here. That's and this is the bit, I'll cut through this because this happens regularly. Processing may take a few minutes. Uh, here's the edit media settings. Now, I've changed the media name to a custom name, uh, HANWC210. That's because I know that this paper, and um, as I've got sample packs of this, and I've got boxes of the stuff, this is Hannah paper. It was produced for Hewlett Packard, it's a watercolour, 210 grams paper. Now, it's not a bad paper. I use it just for general purpose testing and sort of rough textured art. It's only, let's say 240 grams. Um, uh, yes, sorry, 210 grams. So it's actually quite light paper. A lot of the papers I use like this are 300 grams. Certainly the ultra smooth fine art that I'm basing this on is a heavier paper. So I want to change the settings here. Well, I'll change the name to something meaningful. Keep it short, keep it meaningful because it's going to appear on a display here. Uh, I've changed the RGB profile that is associated with the paper to the one that I've made. It says P700-900 HANWC-210 USFA STD.ICC. So the USFA is the media setting it's based on. The STD tells you that I used it at the standard print setting when I was making the profile. It's not a great deal of difference between them, but it can make a difference sometimes. I've, I've looked at some media settings elsewhere for printers like this. So there we have it. It's listed as a media type as a fine art paper. The one thing I've needed to change is I've changed the paper thickness. Now this is in millimeters. So if you've got paper specification in mils or something like that, you'll need to do the conversion to millimeters because it's millimeters in this. And this paper is 0.35 of a millimeter thick. It's not always easy to find that in the paper specifications. The uh, the standard fine art, as I say, is a heavier paper, is 0.46, I think. So I've changed these. I've done that, and I've created this new version of a profile. It's a co of a media setting. It's a copy of another, and I've given it its name, HWC210. So there we go. Um, I've created this. Now, when I save it for the first time, it will download it to the printer. You do have to, when you uh, fire this software up, have the printer up and connected on your network because it will pull information from the printer. And as you create stuff here, it will download it to the printer. So you need your printer switched on, connected to the network when you're doing this. The other thing is it's on a per printer basis. So if you've got three of these printers, you need to do this on three different printers. Not a problem. Uh, what about if I've got a lab somewhere set up with, I don't know, half a dozen of these printers? Sounds a bit tedious. Well, it is possible to export this media setting and it comes out as an, um, yeah, here, uh, a .emy um, file. That contains the link to the profile, which should, you know, which you're setting up and it contains the information and that can be just imported into other printers. 
Um, normally I wouldn't go, go that route because I'm just doing this on a single printer. There's no way to do it, you need to do it. But anyway, I've created a new media based on an old one. I've edited settings that needed editing. Uh, there's a paper feed offset, uh, various other things. You, there's not many alterations you can make here, but you should be able to find one of the original uh, media types. Ideally, the one that you've based your profile on, and you should be able to just set it up like this. Now, some manufacturers are starting, paper manufacturers are starting to make these files available. Um, if so, then you will use this piece of software, the Epson Media Installer, to install media onto your printer. Um, that's how you use that. Now, if I just go OK here, apply edits to that, and this is another bit where we get the little message saying processing this may take several minutes. Uh, interestingly enough, you never know whether it's going to take several minutes or not. Sometimes it does, you get the same message. And that's uh, perhaps something Epson software people could have a look at a bit more than just a basic setup. There we go, that's done. Now, the printer should now be set up with this media type. So I'm going to load this sheet of paper. I'm going to put it in there. And I get the normal paper type. Uh, settings come up. Now I always set this for papers. I know some people don't bother with it or don't find it annoying. It just helps me make fewer mistakes and waste less paper. So uh, it says premium luster, A3 plus from what I've had in here before. It is not premium luster. So I go to the uh, display here. It gives me a list of recently used media. I'll go for more paper types, gives me a list, the normal list, photo paper, proofing paper, matte paper, fine art paper. I go down the list and I see in fine art paper, which is what I've set this, there's the list of velvet fine art, ultra smooth. I go down through the list and at the bottom of the list, I find one that says HANWC210. So there we go, paper type, HANWC210, OK, and there we go. Paper's loaded, ready to print. Now, I'm not going to print because you just print normally. Um, you use profile exactly as you would normally. If you're using the Epson print layout software and I select the HAN WC210 paper, it will automatically assign the correct profile. Now, I can choose any profile I like, but if you do use software that automatically picks up profiles, this is a way of making sure that your profiles get associated with your paper. So that's all there is to it. The uh, Epson Media Installer, a bit of free software to download from Epson. If you've got to use, if you use much third party paper, particularly if you have a particular favorite and it's, you know, it's just a convenience of setting it up. Um, so there you go. I do this on large format printers all the time. Um, it's an interesting thing to add to smaller printers like this. It does for you know, the 900 and the 700 are the same. Um, if you've got any questions, uh, please do feel free to uh, look at, ask on the video. Have a look at the notes that go with the video. I'll put any useful links I get there as well. I uh, hope this has been useful to you. So uh, oh, well, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And uh, thank you very much.